All right, so uh, going in line with the previous video, we are going with balling on a budget. Maybe, mom, we have that at home. Um, but you know, without with all joking aside, uh, what we are looking at today is some of the SDS uh, import product lines and why they are a viable option and not just good enough. Now there are people out there that are going to say that, yeah, you can put in quotations, they are just good enough, but there are some reasons why um, they are an actual viable option and not just in the good enough category. And why I'm going to say that is, now I don't own a high-end 2011. Uh, this is a Springfield Prodigy. I have my RMR on there. I have a TLR1 uh, that is FDE because I live in Ohio and we have a lot of deserts and this helps it blend in. It's very important for the camouflage with the deserts of Southern Ohio. So this is my Springfield Prodigy. Uh, you're going to have to trust me that everything has been made clear and checked prior to filming due to the YouTube stipulations because they don't want us to show safety on camera, of course. That would be, like, ir irresponsible. But nonetheless, this is the Springfield Prodigy uh, DS. Uh, this was originally purchased by a friend who had to send it back to Springfield to get it worked on, to get it running. It didn't end up being significant issues, but a requel spring uh, needed to be, I think, lightened, as well as there was uh, too much coating. The DLC or the Cerakote they use on the slides, whatever it is, uh, they used too much of it, basically. It coated the rails. It was slowing down the gun's ability, the firearm's ability to go back into battery, so it uh, just kept having stovepipes. So, uh, Prodigy. Out of the box, it did not run, but now it runs amazingly, and I do trust it 100%. This is the... Uh, SDS imports the TSOS BR9DS. Uh, it is a 2011 magazine compatible with uh, the Prodigy, with uh, other very popular 2011s, and it runs. Does it pass the 10.8 test? I don't fucking know. I never tried the 10.8 test. I did try shooting it on with the magazine dropped, with non supported, kind of like a 10.8 test to see if the extractor had proper tension on it and it shot about three o'clock with three or four of the magazines that I tried. So I was, you know, it wasn't throwing them uh, in the direction that I think would have passed the 10-8 test, but it was still able to extract without the magazine in there to help support the extractor. So it functions, it is accurate. It has a non-full length guide rod, which I personally like. Uh, and the another thing is it's highly affordable compared to even the Prodigy without any accessories this firearm is half the price now the trigger is a little bit heavier which if you like 1911s if you like 2011s you know I went into another video about use the trigger that you have cool if you already have some nice 1911s the trigger on these may bother you a little bit however that's a very simple fix but uh, I've got the little hollow sun on there, and this is an extremely fun pistol to shoot. It is the uh, government slide model. You have your front serrations, you have co-witness sights, you have a direct optic mount uh, instead of plates. Um, and the grip module is interchangeable with several other uh, 2011 style grip modules. So the uh, SDS, and you can see some slide wear, maybe, you can see it, you can see some slide wear from holstering and from me actually shooting this. This has not been, you know, something that's just sat around. Once I got it in, I did take it out and shoot it. I do not work for SDS Imports or TSOS or any of their other uh, subsidiaries or companies. I just happen to like their stuff. Everything else I own by SDS or T SDS Imports are guns that have been revitalized. Uh, by that, they're, they're not they're, they're brands that have been revitalized, or there are version they are versions of guns that were used in very uh, volatile time periods in U.S. history, and they have copied them, cloned them, whatever you want to call it. 
and they are putting out some really nice high-end stuff. So there's the BR9DS. There's a thousand videos on this, but just comparing it to owning, you know, the Prodigy, it's a good gun. It needs a trigger job. Outside of that, uh, if you want, if you're not familiar with uh, 1911s or 2011s, you're probably not going to be that bothered by it. If you are, then you're going to want to do a trigger job on it, go out, hit the range, and either way, you're going to have a crap load of fun with this gun. I, I really like it. I am thoroughly impressed with it as a very viable option in the 2011 market. Like, I can't stress that enough. When you're looking at people that are working, people that are in college, a lot of people forget where they come from. But if you're working, if you're in college, or if you have a family, but you still want to treat yourself, you still want to have hobbies and actually be out there shooting with your buddies, you know, dropping, you know, twelve, fifteen hundred dollars on the pistol itself, then wanting to get an optic, then wanting to get a light, then wanting to buy holsters may not be a viable option for you because you're going to be into the gun by the all said and done like well over well over two thousand dollars versus being able to spend six to seven depending on where you buy it and getting a cheap optic or fuck the optic maybe you don't even need the optic um but you just want a 2011 because you want a 2011 i don't know why you want one but you just want one right so you go out and you pick up the mac 9 ds or the br9 and you're gonna have a reliable, shootable platform, and then you can get the optic later. You know, some people are gonna watch this and say, you know what, fuck it, quit being a poor, save up and buy a Staccato, save up, save up and buy a Prodigy, buy a Nighthawk. And by the way, I do not put the Prodigy, the Nighthawk, and the Staccato in the same category. There are production guns, and there are boutique guns. The Platypus, on the other hand, it's in a fucking league of its own by itself, and that is an amazing concept, and I cannot wait to get my hands on one, uh, but besides the point. So, production guns. Both of these are production guns. Yes, the Springfield Armory, Armory may be considered a higher level production gun. Is it though? Trigger-wise, some other things, but this one did not run out of the box. And to throw an optic on that, an RMR, it comes with their own proprietary uh, little optic mounting plate to so now I've got you know two points of failure I had to throw an optic plate on there then I had to mount an optic to it so I had to spend I already had the optic but I had to spend an additional 50 bucks just to put an optic on this that I liked without buying one of their hex this you take it out of the box you find the RMRC optic pattern that you like you throw it on there and you're fucking ready to go I like that. I like the direct optic mounting version, personal preference. Maybe people red lock tight their MOS plates on their guns and they don't have an issue with it. Beats me. Now moving on. One of the other things that I extraordinarily like, this is my uh, military surplus DPM. And we are going to try to do this on camera real quick. Uh, DPM camo. Uh, then it connects to your belt. This is, eh. oh, so you have two points for attention there. You have your flappy flap, then you have a snappy snap. This is my L9A1 high power clone from SDS Imports. Uh, this is from their brand uh, called Inglis, which is a revitalization of a company from World War II and was actually in service up until, I think, 2000. So... Uh, the high powers, the English high powers, were offered originally with a tangent type rear, rear sight and then more of a humped fixed style rear sight and then eventually went into this configuration later in the 90s, which is, you know, the L9A1 is pretty iconic. It's a huge piece of history. I went into this in another video with Mac V SOG. Click on my, um, if you want to, click on my uh, Instagram link. Check out the targets that this thing was able to, the groupings this thing was able to get. I posted the targets on Instagram. I didn't keep the targets like I should have because I didn't think I'd be making YouTube videos again, but here we go, here we are. So this is a very, this is an extremely nice trigger. It is a very iconic uh, firearm and it is affordable. 
Uh, I was going to bring out a Kareen to show you some of the other alternatives. You can spend $5.99 on a Kareen that is rough. Yes, it is an Israeli import. Yes, it is an FN high power clone. So is this though. This is not like some of the other uh, high powers on the market. This is a very one-to-one -one copy of an FN minus the slide, uh, the slide, the magazine safety type thing, right? So outside of that, this is a very, very good copy for 450 minus spending 600 And I love surplus guns. I'm not telling you not to buy one. What I'm saying is be prepared for what you get. I have several surplus high powers, and I went over this in another video, but out of the uh, four or five that I bought, two of them function and shot as they should. All of them functioned, but only two of them functioned point of aim, point of impact, without needing some significant work done to them. I was going to bring out a Kareen because it is the most comparable in price compared to this gun. I didn't know because I fucking forgot. So, the Kareens are on Atlantic Firearms. They are about 600 bucks, uh, $599. They may be on sale for Father's Day for $499. If they're on that price point, maybe grab one for collectors. Uh, they have the FEG Hungarian clones, which are really good shooters if you get a great one. Sometimes you'll get one. Uh, I can't drop the magazine due to YouTube, but without the lanyard, with holding the lanyard ring, this thing does not rattle. The lanyard ring rattles. Hold the lanyard ring. This is a tight-fitting gun, and it functions out of the box. It runs. It groups. Uh, it is extraordinarily fun to shoot. Moving on. Did a video on that. Watch that video. There is some foul language in it. I did realize how much I cuss on camera, which... Don't judge me. Or judge me. This is one of my favorites. I have several original Colts. So this is the U.S. property marked or uh, property of the U.S. government. Uh, there's no gaudy banners. There is the original GI sites. But this thing just, this is one of their newer versions. They have the CMP version out now. This is one of their newer versions. And it comes with a much better phosphate finish or parkerized finish instead of, this is my stakeout. I love the stakeout. It has all the controls that I would want on it, the extended beaver tail, the upgraded sights. Now, I got a little jaded on this gun because the moment I bought it, they put out the version with a brass bead front sight. This is very reminiscent of the MEU uh, SOC guns, uh, which this was meant to be a throwback to the US Police Department, the NYPD uh, detectives, and the modifications they did to their 1911s back in the 70s. But it also fits very well with the simple modifications that were done to the MEU SOC guns that were the Delta operators were using. So this thing is extraordinarily freaking awesome. I really love uh, this 1911. I'm up to like 600 rounds on it, and I haven't had any issues outside of uh, magazines. Um, this gun is, as you can see, uh, along with my high power, I have dropped it. Um, I am going through some physical therapy for some neurological issues and cardiac shit uh, that I, uh, which is why I have been absent from the YouTube, and I've really only been posting on Instagram. Um, but there are also groupings and uh, pictures of this on my Instagram. Um, but this, if you want, if you know, you just want like an iconic piece of history without you know dropping you know X Y Z dollars. But three, these go on sale for three ninety nine, maybe lower, maybe three fifty nine, and you get an incredible shooter. Originally, yes, there were some in my. MIM parts in these. These now, uh, I think from the, the very beginning, you get forged, you know, forged frame, forged slide, you know, you had a great barrel, but there were some MIM parts that people were complaining about. That's gone away. Um, the stakeout, uh, honestly, oddly enough, the U.S. property 1911 here has a better trigger than the stakeout, but the stakeout's trigger is still freaking sweet. I can't stress that enough. My, I have some mil-spec Springfields that do not have anywhere close to as good a trigger as these SDSs, and that's embarrassing because I've spent a lot more money on my 1911 collection. If you check out my Instagram, you will see that I do own more than budget firearms. I make these videos because there are plenty of videos on high-end and mid-range mid guns. 
what there aren't a lot of videos on are like true explanations for military surplus, modern surplus, police trade-ins, and why they are a viable option in today's market. So here we go, here's the video, not gonna keep it too long, it's already been long enough, you made it this far, you have patience and you were actually interested in this, and I'm not gonna tell you to like and follow on here, uh, that's up to you. But if you do wanna come along and check out some like other random shit, I would love you to. If not, pop over to my Instagram, check out the videos, check out the, or not the videos, but check out the posts, check out the, uh, you know, the pics of uh, some of how these function. I don't do shooting videos right now anymore due to neurological and some cardiac shit that I'm going through. And um, I just don't. It, it's hard to get a camera set up. I have to have someone with me and it's, it's just weird right now. So I'm not going to do it. I can get into that in another video. Actually, I will do another video on that. Thank you for watching and hope you guys have a great day. Uh, get out and enjoy what you spend your money on, not what other people want to judge you for. It's your fucking money. Spend it on what you want to buy it on. Strongly encourage you guys to check out the SDS line. Uh, they are doing some really, really cool things for the firearms community, especially people like me who are collectors, who are history nerds. Um, this has been very good for me for training, for physical therapy to get feel, you know, as I was getting feeling back in my hand and uh, without wanting to drop, you know, and getting used to the sights. I originally, uh, there, I'll get into that in another video, but just real quick, I went from using optics on handguns to start getting functionality back down, back down to uh, iron sights, and then started using smaller sights to help my eyes, and it turns out I'm left eye dominant now. Cool shit. Uh, thanks for watching. I'm gonna try the button. Does the button actually work?